Good morning. This is another episode of the Medical Facts YouTube channel series. Today we're going to talk about sleep apnea. Sleep apnea is when the breathing stops during the night, causing drops in oxygen levels that wake you up and you go back to sleep very quickly. And this happens again and again during the night, causing you to be tired in the daytime. The oxygen levels, if they're low enough, can cause problems with your heart, with he causing headaches, uh, can increase the risk of strokes, can cause blood pressure problems, uh, many medical consequences. In the daytime, sleepiness leads to more auto accidents, needs to more, leads to more sleepiness in the daytime, more need to take naps. Uh, inattention, even if you're not falling asleep, makes you a worse driver, increases the rate of car accidents by maybe as much as 400%. Commercial drivers, to get a commercial driver's license, if your weight is above or your BMI is above a certain number, you're required to have an evaluation for sleep apnea because the insurers have recognized the increased accident rate. And to uh, lower their costs, they want to make sure anybody with sleep apnea can prove that either they have it or don't. And if they have it, they have to prove that it is under good treatment and that they're complying with the treatment and that the treatment is effective. The symptoms of sleep apnea typically are daytime sleepiness and snoring and frequent nocturnal awakening. Sometimes people come with complaints of insomnia when their problem isn't really getting to sleep, their problem is just staying asleep. They're constantly awake during the night. Sometimes they complain of waking up to pee at night uh, and, and perhaps they have prostate issues or other problems that lead to this, but if they were not waking up so much, they wouldn't even be aware of it and would probably sleep through it. How we diagnose this is to do a sleep study, which can be done either in the sleep laboratory or in the home. A sleep study consists of sleeping in a controlled circumstance where we measure body movements, uh, respiratory effort, airflow, electroencephalogram, electrocardiogram, oxygen saturation, and more to try to determine it, what is the problem with the sleep, not just for sleep apnea. There are other sleep disorders such as narcolepsy or idiopathic hypersomnia. Uh, and various other conditions, restless leg syndrome, that can also be diagnosed with a sleep study. But the vast majority of patients presenting to the sleep laboratory have something called obstructive sleep apnea, where they are attempting to breathe, and due to lack of muscle tone opening their airway, the breathing blocks up or gets shallow enough to drop the oxygen levels, as we noted. The sleep study, you arrive at a sleep laboratory typically at 8, night, eight o'clock at night. You're wired up, uh, given instructions. You go to sleep while the recordings are made. You get up in the morning, go to work. Uh, the technologist scores the study with the help of the computer. A physician reviews the results, and then you come back in and, and hear about the results and what the treatment is. Treatment most of the time in 2024 is still to wear a CPAP mask, which is a continuous positive airway pressure device where you wear a mask over the nose or the mouth and nose, and this applies pressure to keep the throat open so it doesn't block. It basically re replaces the muscle tone that was lost just due to the fact of being asleep. And this eliminates the snoring and eliminates the vast majority of the apneas. It wouldn't be uncommon to have a patient waking up 50 times per hour with oxygen drops into the 60% range, which is terrible. And with CPAP treatment, maybe they'll only be waking up three times an hour or less without any oxygen drops. And if you have bad sleep apnea, it makes a huge difference in how you feel in the daytime. If you have mild sleep apnea, the treatment may not be quite as impressive. Does anybody ever get cured from sleep apnea? Sometimes people that are really heavy that have a large neck, if you lose a lot of weight, the sleep apnea gets better, but there are also skinny people that have sleep apnea due to hereditary effects that change the shape of the throat or the position of the jaw or the position of the tongue or the position of the soft mouth, uh, palate in the mouth. All of those things don't go away with weight loss, even though weight loss may improve the symptoms somewhat and may reduce the apnea count. The uh, patients are typically followed up every six months to get data off the machine. The machines that we use now can automatically adjust the pressure requirements based on the amount of apnea that the patient is having. And when we check the patient for compliance, the data from the machine will tell us exactly which hours they use the device, which could be useful if you need an alibi sometime, and also can show the effectiveness of the device as they will count how many apneas are had while using the device. And this is typically checked every six months, but sometimes more often if we're making adjustments to the settings. In any case, sleep apnea is a huge problem. Uh, it's hard to know how many people really have it, <clears throat> but it is super common. And if you're snoring and having daytime sleepiness, you really ought to get this checked out because there's probably a greater than 90% chance that you have at least some sleep apnea and having this treated can be life-changing. And don't forget to click the uh, like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and I appreciate you listening. Thank you.